Let's continue our introduction to Copernicus by looking at how we can create solver-like behavior inside of COPS. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon. If you'd like to grab it, you can do so on there. Let's go ahead and drop down a COP network. And first of all, we're going to need something to work on. So some sort of image. I'm just gonna drop down a UV grid. This is a recipe that I have set up. It's literally just a file node with this set as the file name. This is default to Houdini, so it's not anything that I've created or anything like that. You can easily get this just by typing that in. I would recommend doing that because it's super good for visualizing some different things inside of COPS. And it's something that I am using quite a bit. So let's drop down a block node or a block in here so that we can get a block begin and a block end. And this is part of our solver. So we also need an invoke block. So we'll drop that down and then we have to set which block we want to look at. So we have this block end node dialog box there. So we can select our block end. We can copy that and we can paste that path into that block end node box right there. Now there's a couple things that we need to do. First of all, we need to figure out what exactly we want to do inside of our block here or inside of our solver. And there's a lot of different things that you can do with that. I'm going to cover a couple of different things. Let's start off by just distorting it. So we'll do a distort by slope. We can drop this down and we can actually do this a couple of different ways. We could place everything inside of this block or we can bring things inside through this invoke block and using our inputs and outputs and stuff. I'm gonna do that just because it looks a little bit cleaner, I feel. So I'm gonna just disconnect this and let's come to our invoke block and we need to set some inputs. So I'm gonna create a input. I'm gonna call this one color, leave that on RGBA and then we'll create a second one. We'll call this one direction because our distort needs a direction here and that is a UV. So now if we look at our invoke block, we have this UV and this color that we are importing. So let's go ahead and wire in our slope direction and our color into our color. And now we need to tell the block what we want to import and what we want to export. So our block begin, let's select that. Let's add an input. We'll call this color. Let's add another input and let's call this one direction and make sure that's set to UV. And these need to match up with what we have on our invoke block. And actually we need to come into our invoke block as well. And we need to add an output here. So let's add a color and let's wire this into the source and into the direction here. And then let's come to our block end and we can add the color as our output. So wire that distort output into our color and we can look at this invoke block and we get an error because we don't have anything piped into the slope direction. So let's type in fractal noise and we can add this and use this as a slope direction. So we'll wire that into the height here and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just up this kernel size. It gives us something a little bit closer to what we're starting with. Now we can come to this invoke block and we can set the iterations to be $F. And that is going to allow us to use the timeline. We can play this and use this sort of like a solver. So I'm gonna click play here and you see that nothing actually happens. So if we take a look at our invoke block, we see we have this little error. And if we look at this, you see cannot perform repeat iterations if outputs are not compatible with inputs doing a single iteration. So the reason this doesn't work is because we haven't actually explicitly stated that we want to have all of our inputs as outputs as well. So we need to come back in here and we need to add in our direction as an output. So I just wanted to show that you do need to make sure that these all match up and that we have the same outputs as we do inputs in order for this to work. So this is already set up here, but we need to add an output here. So we'll set this as direction, do this as UV and let's output our direction there. And now you can see that we have this actually working. So if I click play, it's going to slowly distort this image out. So you could do a lot of different things with this. One thing that you could do would be to, maybe you want to just stop it after a certain amount of time. You could drop down a switch. We can make a copy of this, just alt click and drag. Let's delete this iteration. 
And maybe we set this to like, I don't know, frame 75, sure. Now we can wire these into our input here. Preview this and let's set this to $FF. Oops, $FF is greater than 75. So now I'll click play and you can see that we get this slow distortion until we hit frame 75 and then it stops distorting. So lots of different things that we can do with this. It's kind of a cool little effect that we can do with this, which you can use for some different things. Let's come back in here though and let's make a copy of this. I'm just gonna show something else that we can do with this as well. Let's make a copy of our invoke block as well. And we need to come to our block end here and we need to set this to be what we're looking for in the invoke, invoke block. Now I'm gonna delete this distort and I'm just gonna drop down a blend and I'm gonna actually set this to be a subtraction. And I'm gonna come to the R invoke block here and let's set this back to an RGBA for both of these. And or actually let's set these to mono for both of these. I'm gonna just set this to color one and color two. And I'm gonna just delete those inputs here and let's just create some fractal noises here. So we can take this, let's maybe up the size here and we can pipe this in for our color. To create a second one, let's offset this one a little bit and pipe that into our color too. And we want to make sure that these are set to RGBA. And we're gonna do color for this as well. Oops, color, sorry, color two. And color two. Set this to mono. And we can pipe in our color two into the foreground. And let's make sure that this is mono as well. And we have this sort of an effect going on. This gets rid of this very quickly, but if we set this down to something super low, maybe like 0.05, we can slowly start to erode this away. So if I press play, you can see that we get this sort of an erosion. So we can kind of get this nice effect where it's starting to like eat away. This could be good for maybe you want to have some sort of a texture blending in your actual shaders. You can do something like that, set this to a super low value and you can see that, no, that's probably too much. Let's set this to something like that. You can see that we get this slow erosion of textures. We could use this as a blend mask for something else. And obviously you could, you know, offset this dollar F plus, I don't know, 50 or whatever, or minus 50, I mean. And you can get a much slower erosion. You can kind of offset this so it starts later on in your animation or whatever. So you can play around with this and do all sorts of cool things. It's not exactly a solver type thing. It doesn't work necessarily in all situations, but you can do some cool things with it. So I'd recommend playing around with it, getting used to it, and seeing what sort of cool effects you could use this for. Just whatever your imagination comes up with. There's lots of different things that, like I said, you can use this for. So hopefully this has helped you out. I have a bunch of other videos on my channel that go over a bunch of different things inside Houdini. If you want to learn more about Houdini, then I would recommend checking those out. I have been covering a bunch of the new stuff in 20.5. I will continue to work within 20.5. So we'll do a bunch of other things inside of COPS and take a look at some, some new stuff. So hopefully this has helped you out. Thank you guys for watching and have a good day.